Next up, let's look at the steering wheel and everything we're going to be able to do here. There is quite a lot that we can do. So we're going to start off on the left hand side here. So we've got our rocker knobs so we can change between radio stations or if a phone was connected, it's going to give us the ability to change between songs. We've got our volume rocker so we can go audio up or down from there or pressing the button in is going to mute the audio. Moving down a little bit, we've got our adaptive cruise control. So the adaptive cruise control essentially is a set it and forget it system. So we know that it's on there because as you can see, it's turning on and off. So with the adaptive cruise control on, as I mentioned, it's a set it and forget it. So we turn it on, let's say if we're at a, you know, 120 on the highway, if the vehicle in front of us slows down, it's automatically going to break for you. If they get out of the way or speed up, it'll automatically pick you up back up to your set speed. Once you're on the speed that you'd like, you're going to either, you're going to press the set button here and then left and right. So we can either decrease or increase one kilometer or one mile per hour at a time. Moving down, these ones are going to be the distance indicators. So how close or how far away are we from the vehicle that's in front of us? So we can't actually see it on the center screen, but can we see that heads up here? Is it going to show? Oh, there we go. Yes. So we can see the heads up display there. So as you can see, we can just kind of make it out. There we go. So how close or how far are we from the vehicle that's in front of us? So really just a matter of personal preference there, but I love, 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 love that heads up display. It's just, it's so non-obtrusive. It's so simple and elegant. I love the look of it. Now it is kind of going different colors here. When you're driving, it doesn't actually do that. It looks like that just because I'm running off of my phone here or the recording device. Okay, and moving back down. Next up, so we've got our adaptive cruise control figured out. And let's go to the right hand side of the steering wheel. So we've got our back button. This is going to be our up and down for the settings. And then we've got our voice command button. So let's start off with our voice command button. So we can press this button in order to be able to change radio stations. If we want to navigate home, navigate to different places, etc. We can do that by pressing this button as we move up and down. So I'm going to move you up just a tiny little bit. So we can change whatever settings are shown there. Again, matter of personal preference. So we're on our trip counter. In order to reset the trip counter, very straightforward. All you're going to do is press and hold this button and that's reset it for us. So this one, this rocker knobs, we're going to press that in in order to be able to readjust. Moving down, we've got the ability to either hang up on a phone call or we can answer a phone call. So my phone's not connected, so that's obviously not going to work. Heads up display, we can tweak the settings there also. So what shows up in that heads up display? So we can turn it on or off, we can adjust the brightness, the position, or what's actually included in the display. So really a matter of personal preference, I do recommend playing with this a little bit so you can get an idea of what you do and what you don't like. And it's all a matter of preference in this. Let's turn this off for a moment. And next up is gonna be our audio button. So audio, we can change between our AM, FM, Sirius XM, or if our phone was connected, it would show there also. Two other buttons to point out, we've got our nav button and then our settings. So let's start off with our nav button first. So navigation, we can either navigate home, previous destinations, etc. So it's really, really nice that that's built into this instrument cluster screen rather than having to flip off to our side and use this screen. And lastly is going to be our settings. So settings, we've got a few options also. So our display setup is how is this going to look? So really a matter of personal preference, our languages, our speedometer, is it going to be miles per hour as well as kilometers per hour? We can add the tachometer in there also. Measurement units, is it going to be in kilometers and liters per hundred? So really, again, matter of personal preference there. And then we've got our temperature, our tire pressure, and our language. Traction control, obviously, if we want to turn that off, we can. Really useful if you are either doing off-roading or if you're in really, really deep snow conditions. Hill descent is going to control the speed of the vehicle, and all you have to do is worry about is steering. And then sway control if you have a trailer hooked up. Now let's go to our driver assistance, tons of options. So our blind spot system is going to be this little, oh, actually let's go. Maybe it'll be easier to see it on this side. Uh, we can kind of make it out. So looking right there, so that little guy. 
So that's going to go orange whenever our vehicle's gone into our blind spot on either side of the vehicle. Now, if we have our trailer hooked up, we've got the trailer blind spot also. So that's going to extend the blind spot range to cover off our trailer. Cross traffic alert, if there's a car that's coming perpendicular, so either from our left or our right side, whether we see it or not, we're going to get a warning letting us know that there is a potential collision. Cruise control, we've either got adaptive or normal. So normal cruise is if you break, it's going to automatically, you essentially have to reset cruise versus the adaptive side of things, which is what we're set at now. It is a set it and forget it. So you set it at whatever your speed is on the highway, the vehicle's automatically gonna slow you down or pick you back up to speed. At our driver alert system, that's tied into our lane keeping system. So if we get too many alerts for our lane keeping system, the system is going to tell us that we should probably rest. Lane keeping, actually, if we play with that a little bit, so we've got a few different modes. So we've got our alert and aid or both. The alert is going to be a shake on the steering wheel. Now it does throw people off the first time it happens. The best way for me to describe it is imagine if you're going over that rumble pavement. So that bumpy pavement, that's gonna be how it feels like on the steering wheel. The aid is actually going to recenter you and pull you back into the lane, and then both. So it's going to recenter you and it's going to give you a little bit of a steering wheel shake. Again, matter of personal preference there. And then our intensity, either high, normal, or a low intensity for the steering wheel shake. Moving into our pre-collision assist, we've got a couple options. So alert sensitivity is either high, medium, or low. And then distance indication, but the big one is going to be the active braking. I do recommend keeping that one turned on. And the reason why is because if you're potentially going to be in a collision, the vehicle is actively going to brake for you. So really, really useful feature to have. And I do recommend keeping that one turned on because it's going to minimize or completely avoid the collision. So if someone slams on their brakes in front of you, you don't see it, it's going to brake for you automatically. So I do recommend keeping that one engaged. And those are gonna be our driver assistance settings. We've got some towing settings, so trailer options, connection checklist, so connecting the trailer, let's take a peek on the outside of the vehicle to see what that setup is like. And we've got some advanced settings, so some basic vehicle settings, so we've got the alarm, we've got different types of sensors there, so either perimeter sensors, which are going to be sensors on the outside of the vehicle, all sensors, so those are going to be sensors inside and out, and then we can also ask on exit, so do we want to have those sensors on, yes or no? Auto engine off, so that's the one that we can press on that center console there, turning that on or off. So that's the one that's automatically going to kill power to the engine. If you don't like it, you can turn it off here. Easy entry exit, and making sure you don't have to press the unlock button on the key fob. Lighting. Auto high beams, I do recommend keeping this one turned on. So with auto high beams is if there's an on, well, if you're driving at night, dark out, the vehicle's automatically going to turn the high beams on for you. If it senses an oncoming vehicle, it's automatically going to dim them and then turn them off completely. Auto lamp delay, so when the vehicle's locked, how long do the lights stay on for? 10, 20, or 120 seconds. And then our welcome lights. So as I mentioned, we are in the daytime, so we won't be able to see those welcome lights, but it is a Lincoln logo that shows on the outside of the vehicle. Our locks, we've got auto unlock, our auto lock, feedback, miss lock. Again, personal preferences. I do recommend taking a peek and seeing which one you prefer there, whether or not you like that auto unlock feature or not. The remote unlock, so when we unlock the door, what happens? Do all doors get unlocked or is it just the driver's door? Mirrors, when the vehicle's turned off, when you lock it, the with the auto fold, it's automatically gonna fold in those side view mirrors. Oil life reset, when you get your oil changed, we can reset it here. And then our power lift gate, so the, lift, the switch that's on the outside of the vehicle, we can either enable or disable it. Remote start, when the vehicle's remote started, what happens? Looking at climate, so we can either go or auto or our last setting. So auto lets the vehicle determine what the cabin temperature should be versus our last setting is exactly that, is what was the last setting in the vehicle before it was turned off. Seats and wheel, when we do the remote start, do our seats and our steering wheel also get adjusted? I do recommend keeping that turned on. And sorry, when I say adjusted, I mean on. So if you've got the heated steering wheel going, will that turn on? Yes or no, it's automatically going to let the vehicle determine whether or not that happens. Then our duration, so how long does that last for? Is it gonna last for five, 10, or 15 minutes on the remote start? And we can turn it off completely by pressing that button. 
power running boards do we want to have the running boards out all the time do we want to have them off completely or do we want to have it on auto so with it on auto when we open up the door it's automatically going to drop the running boards for us windows we've got a remote open and a remote close let's jump outside the vehicle to see how that works in order to roll down the windows using the key fob, what we're gonna do is press that unlock button three times on the third press you're gonna hold. So one, two, three, and hold. As you can see, the windows are down from there. In order to roll the windows back up, all we're gonna do is press that lock button here three times, and same thing on that third button press we're gonna hold. So one, two, three, and hold. And that's how it's done. And we've got our wipers, so courtesy wipe. I do recommend keeping that one off. And the reason why, especially during the winter time, is with the courtesy wipe, it's going to wipe once for you. Downside of that is that if you're covered in ice and snow, the last thing you want is to end up damaging the motor in the vehicle. In the windshield wipers, I should say. And from there, we've got our rain sensing wipers. So I do recommend keeping it on rain sensing. We've got the ability using the right stick here to adjust the windshield wipers also. We can use this in order to be able to adjust the fluid. So how quickly that fluid comes out. And then we can move it up or down also in order to determine how quick or how slow that goes. And back, and those are going to be our basic vehicle settings, and the My Key. My Key allows you to set certain limitations on a key fob and the vehicle. So let's say if you're going to be lending the vehicle out to a kid, or to a friend, or a spouse, and you want to play a trick on them, or if you're just a generic safety thing, we can set a key up so that it's got certain limitations, like it can only go up to a certain speed. Or maybe the audio won't play unless the seatbelt's on, or the, the driver's seatbelt's in. So again, really, really useful features in order to set that up. And that's going to be our basic key setting, our basic settings on the steering wheel. Looking, as I mentioned, so at the very top here, we've got our windshield wiper. So we can change the fluid levels here. In order to get our front windshield wipers, we're going to pull towards us. Our rear, we're going to push away. And on the very tip on the outside, we'd use this one in order to be able to use our rear windshield wiper. Rear window wiper, I should say. On our left stick, so this one here, as you can see, we've got our blinkers. Pulling in towards us is going to either let us flash the high beams if we want to. And on the very tip of this one, we've got our lane keeping system. So we can turn that lane keeping system on or off by pressing that button. One other thing to point out, we've got our paddle shifters here. So we can either increase or decrease a gear. Again, just depending on if you want a little bit more control. 